everybody. So today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about something that is very dear to me personally. And that is a style of art called outsider art. And it's often, well sometimes it's referred to as art brute as well. But I tend to see the term outsider art used more often. And that's what I consider myself probably chiefly. I mean, I think my art falls into a few categories. I think it falls into naive and expressionism and abstract. Um, and I may talk about all those styles at a different time on a video, but since this video is about outsider art, I want to focus on that. And the first thing a lot of people probably don't know is what is outsider art? Um, well, this this can actually be something that causes issues because some people, they hate labels in any form and you know, they don't want to specify what a certain kind of art is. But for the sake of, you know, history and stuff, my understanding is that outsider art started as um, two different kinds of things. The first is um, outsider art was kind of a name given to artists who were not um, classically trained in art. They didn't go to art schools or go to art college. They were kind of self-taught, and they just kind of do what feels natural to them and create the kind of art that they like and that that expresses their feelings. So that's the first kind. And I consider myself part of that because the only formal art training I actually had was like in elementary and middle school, you know, the art classes that everybody has to take. In fact, I didn't even take any art classes in high school. Um, and then I never had any training after that. So I'm definitely self-taught in a lot of ways, especially since in elementary school, my art teacher, she was a really mean woman and she wasn't nice to me, especially. She really didn't like me and she was always kind of putting me down and knocking my artistic style. So I definitely didn't have a lot of training in that way either. But other than being self-taught, another area that outsider art kind of started in was people who are considered kind of outside the fringes of society, like, you know, prisoners who make art, or people who have a mental illness or a disability, or even, um, I was trying to think, there was something else, uh, let's see. I can't remember. But anyway, just people who are kind of on the fringes of society and aren't treated very well. I mean, that could even be like certain kinds of, I guess, um, culturals, um, like, you know, Hispanics in some ways may be considered outsiders in America because they're not treated very well, or African Americans at times may have been considered outsiders in art because, you know, the regular art institutions wouldn't show their work. They would only show like white art and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my understanding is that the term came from. And it's kind of grown since to just include a different, a lot of different kinds of art. But it still often um, seems that people who um, advertise themselves as outsider artists are often kind of, they feel like they're not really a big part of the regular art scene and they also are often self-taught in a lot of ways. So that's kind of what outsider art started from, at least from what I've read and stuff about the subject. And uh, aside from being self-taught, I consider myself an outsider artist because, you know, I, I have autism and that in itself kind of makes me different than the mainstream. And I also, you know, have had problems with depression and anxiety. So that is also a way that, you know, kind of makes you feel like an outsider in some ways. So that's kind of uh, an overview of what outsider art is. And if you haven't really looked into the subject, I'd suggest that if you like art, you know, you kind of just Google outsider art or find some books about it. Cause there really are some very, very talented artists who do outsider art, and I'm proud to now kind of be a part of the community. I mean, I've become, um, there are people all around the world now that collect my art, and they categorize it as outsider art, and
and I mean, I've sold a lot of my artwork here in America and like in Switzerland and France and Germany and England and Ireland and Australia and I'm sure there's probably other places, Canada. I can't really think of everywhere I've sold, but um, I'm really proud of that. And I've also been part of a few outsider art exhibits, um, mostly here in the U.S., although at least one or two in England. So that's kind of um, why I'm so passionate about outsider art, because I just feel like it gives a lot of us the chance to share our art and have a voice um, without having people tell us that our art isn't good enough or it's not in style or it's, you know, a lot of art institutions, unfortunately, can be a little bit snobbish and outsider art gives us a chance to, you know, show what we can do. So uh, if you would like to see some of my art, um, you can visit my website, www.mirandarussell.com. I have an art gallery on there that you can look at, or you can go to eBay, and some of my art is for sale, um, and you can just search for MRUSS, M-R-U-S-S, art, and it should come up with the pieces I currently have on sale there, and I'll put this information down below, too, in case you want to check it out, but I appreciate you watching, and I hope you'll check out the art genre if you haven't already, so uh, thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this. Bye!